Hi, welcome to Trailers from Hell. I'm Larry Karaszewski. In 1969, Dustin Hoffman was coming off of The Graduate and Midnight Cowboy, and Mia Farrow was hot off of Rosemary's Baby. The two teamed up to make a movie you've probably not seen or heard of, but I'm actually quite a fan of. So let's take a look at John and Mary. What did you say your name was? I didn't say. What's yours? This trailer states over and over that it's not your mother's love story. Now, almost 50 years have passed, so it probably is your mother's love story. Hell, it's your grandmother's love story. In any case, John and Mary is still quite charming. It's just incredibly low-key. I think the film's reputation is actually hurt because you look at that amazing cast and the director, Peter Yates, coming off a career high with Bullet, and expectations are enormous. The movie even landed on the cover of Time magazine, and in a bit of trivia, it's actually the first time the magazine ever used a color photograph for its cover. So this is a big deal. And then the movie comes out, and it's just a slight love story. Today, it would be a mumblecore movie. It's very simple. John and Mary opens with Mia waking up and walking across the apartment nude, and we just stay in that apartment for a long time. It belongs to John, played by Dustin. The two met in the Manhattan bar the night before and went to bed. They don't know anything about each other. It's kind of cute. They're introduced after they've already had sex. My name's John. I'm Mary. I guess it was daring at the time. The rest of the movie plays out as they spend the following day and night together, getting to know each other and occasionally flashing back to scenes from their lives. They have coffee. They eat eggs. Let's just say a highlight is when Hoffman breaks out his album collection and plays Mia a brass band record. Now, I'm making this stuff sound lamer than it is. I'm just trying to get you to bring your expectations down. If you do that, you might actually enjoy this movie. I almost feel like it was made because Hoffman was coming off of playing Ratso Rizzo and just wanted to let folks know, hey, I can be a normal guy. The movie got mediocre reviews, but both stars got nominated for Golden Globes, and the script got a nomination by the Writers Guild. It's by John Mortimer. He went on to create the British television show Rumpole of the Bailey. He was not really a specialist in American youth culture. But to balance this out, the groovy score is by the ultimate hipster, Quincy Jones.